Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another virtual coffee with Lizelle and me, Romani. Hi, everyone. Good morning, everyone. And uh, today we're streaming live from a different tool. I believe you have to, you may have to give StreamYard permission to comment. But please, if you've got any comments, give us a shout out, say hello for our virtual coffee that we run every week at 10 o'clock. We may be changing the time, I think. We will be changing the time slot to later on in the day because everyone is a bit too busy in the morning, I've noticed. So how are you today and what's been on your mind, Lizelle? No, all good, all good. I was wondering about that time you're talking about. We should see, shall we make it earlier for the coffee coffee uh, people in the morning? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, no, I, I'm thinking more like uh, 4 o'clock or 3.30, somewhere around there. That's the time I'm thinking yeah. of. So, yeah. So, on my mind this week, and if you've had, please share with us if you've had bad customer service, because for some reason, I don't know if COVID-19 has just given businesses an excuse to give bad customer service, but it's no matter which company, well, the smaller companies seem to be okay, but when you start dealing with internet companies like MWeb or Telcom, it's been an absolute nightmare to get through. I mean, I've been waiting 20 minutes a time, and as I was telling people last week about doing your due diligence, you know what, you shouldn't just do your due diligence for business, you must do it for everything, and I should have actually followed my own advice and gone and read people's comments, because yeah. as soon as I went on to Twitter and Facebook, and I started reading the comments, I was like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there, 20 minutes, you still don't get someone to answer the phone after 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, they do they get a kickback from Telcom? Because I'd love to see how much that's going to cost me just that one day, because then the call would drop. And then yeah. I have to call again. And then it right. tells you to punch in your ID number. So when I punch in my, my, my ID <laughs> number, the number that they want, they say something else. So oh, my <laughs> word. What a frustration. Very, very frustrating. Do you so, know, Romani, I wonder if it doesn't have something to do with um, the team, you know. I was actually yesterday, I wrote a little article on LinkedIn called um, The Bean Counter in the Cave. So if anybody wants to hop over to my, my LinkedIn page, you can go read it. But in essence, it says your company is actually all about your people. You know, the, mm. the hunters that are with you out there um, making sales. So these big companies, I think they have call center agents and massive staff compliments. And those people just become a number. In other words, they don't really care for you as a person. You're just staff member number one, two, three, and you're actually, actually a burden on the company because I've got to pay your salary, you know, instead of acknowledging that there's a human being with skills and talents and, and grooming them. Now, I understand um, that, that not all companies can do that. Sometimes they just need bodies in seats to make calls, you know. But don't you think that sometimes it's also because there's no incentive for me as a staff member to to actually be nice to a client, I'm still getting paid at the end of the month whether I'm nice or not. Don't you think it's a little bit of that in the bigger companies? I think it, it is. I mean, someone was saying yesterday, I was reading a comment on Facebook, which is also why I'm raising it, because the lady said yeah. that she, I think she called one of the banks and she said mm. she couldn't get through. And then she went into the bank and she's saying to the people, you know, like, you know, we can't get through to you on the phone. And then the person just turned around and said, well, we're too busy. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> we don't need more customers. <laughs> you know, so, and, and, and I think also that maybe the large companies, because they're all reducing their staff, um, it's, it's, it's stressful and they've now got a much bigger workload. So it's also yeah. unfair. Yeah. Uh, so why don't the bigger guys reduce their salaries a little bit, maybe, you know, just to help out? Maybe they are. Yeah. I don't know. But it's just yeah, really, you no. can't use service like that, you know. No, so no, I'm, I just can't use their service. It's just mm -hmm. appalling. Um, and then yeah. which brings me to, to customer service because mm -hmm. people don't think that customer service is also part of your sales. So when mm -hmm. they sign it up, they weren't exactly listening to my needs, which is a, is a, is a key no. 
sales uh, element, you know, when you're selling something to someone, you need to understand that person's need and what it is they want and then help them find the best solution. Don't just say, yes, 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 that will work. And then, you know, you get the product and nothing works and it doesn't work. And, you know, I mean, I explain to the person, I need a very good upline speed. I need a very good downline. Mm -hmm. I explain my entire situation, told them what I'm using it for. So here I come with them setting me up and whatever, and it's the <laughs> cuckest, sorry my language, but the cuckest <laughs> service, whatever, because it didn't serve my needs. So now, yeah. apparently, it's going to cost me 2,000 Rand for a modem I'm not going to be able to oh use, my a, router, sorry, a router that I can't yeah. use. So That's Because crazy. apparently I can't send it back or return it. I mean, how did that, oh. that's not customer service. No, no, absolutely not. That is like how to chase away all my potential customers 101. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the other day, a mistake um, small businesses make if we switch it a little bit now, because I find myself actually after all these years still making this mistake. You know your business, don't you? It's up here because it's your passion, it's your dream then somehow you just assume that everybody you employ understands the business immediately the moment you employ them. It's like, but I've signed your contract. What, what part of that don't you understand? You know? And you forget that you should, yeah, I mean, like how difficult can it be? So then, then we forget to sit the staff down and actually give them a big picture overview of this is what our company looks like. This is our vision. This is what we do because it's the simplest thing, but even myself, I find myself forgetting sometimes to, to tell the staff that, have you seen the maps on my wall? This is our dream. And this is what you are part of. And I find that if I do that, if I make them included, every single person, including the person making the tea, suddenly becomes a salesperson, you know, because they just believe in your vision. And that's a, a very big almost want to call it a burden, but it's not really a burden. It's a responsibility of the business owner to make sure that the people you employ completely understand very clearly where the business is going, what the passion is, what the vision is, because then they'll stick with you through tough times because they believe in you as the inspiration or the the visionary for the business, the person that will look after them through thick and thin and then they'll back you up but customer service is one of the first things you need to show them because they don't get it i had a little one here in my coffee shop the other day we've got this thing if you want to use the free wi-fi in our coffee shop then you must just buy a cup of coffee so we ask that you only just support our barista so now she she kind of misunderstood and she says to the one client now you can't make any photocopies or anything you must first buy coffee (laughs) So, so she she included the entire service offering of our units um, in in this cup of coffee, you know. So the client's like, "How suddenly my two rand photocopy is like thirty rand?" (laughs) So it's just also making sure that they understand what it is that you um, mean. And um, I think that's the advantage we have as small businesses that it's probably easier for us to manage these things with our staff than the frustrations with the large corporates like the M-Webs and the telecoms, you know. I think yes and no as well because mm. um, it's also part of your brand development, you know, mm. and they've also got a lot more staff and they've got training. Yeah. Whereas yeah. as a small business owner, you know, we've got a lot to manage all at once, sure. you know, mm. and, and so we don't always have the time. To, yeah, to, to sit yeah. down but it's also, but it is important because it's part of your brand development uh, yeah, you know yeah. because they got to fit in with your brand and and hopefully you hide the person that's going to fit in with your culture yeah, yeah. Uh, of, of, of your business so yes please let us know if you've had any bad customer service we'd love to know and hear from you if you're watching this please like and share and and, and let everybody know so that we can have mm. discussions and open discussions about business in general life in general because you know People seem to detach that, you know, you must be this business and you must be all for this, but we all have challenges and we all have yeah. the same things. You know, we all eat cake and we all need coffee and we all need, <laughs> and we all need sleep and, and, and sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah. And, 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 and what brings me to investing in yourself, which a lot of people tend to put on the shelf. Um, yeah. I notice now with people going back to work, 
a lot of people are getting very complacent. Oh, I'm back in my job now, but mm -hmm. forgetting to invest in yourself. And by that I mean yeah. is that, you know, you're so busy working in your job and you're getting complacent that you got your job and you come home and you go back to work. And, and, and what are you doing to make sure that you're upskilling yourself? What are you doing to make sure that you're actually mm -hmm. putting more eggs in your basket? So, mm -hmm. so, so, for example, I've been looking at and last week, uh, um, I was talking about <laughs> business mention it today which is crowd one where it came under fire and it had bad uh, media there but but in all honesty i don't think media investigated the business because had they done that they would have realized it's not a financial service provider uh business so why should they be registered with the financial yeah. service provider um so yes and i'll be exploring some of that opportunity a bit later with you today but yes i believe you've also got something to share with us with regards to investing in yourself and really yeah. um, you've got to make that time for yourself yeah no you absolutely do um maybe uh, a whole lot of people know this but we've got an academy so we have some you know like training and, and programs and courses and we've got some really nice uh, things happening with our academy but while you're doing the marketing, you're trying to recruit for, for people to come to the courses. And that I realized that there are so many people out there with, they can probably show you a stack this thick of all the certificates for courses that they've gone to over the years. And my question normally to them is, why don't you go to all those courses if you're telling me that you are still needing this and needing that? Are you not applying it? Did you just go because your boss told you you must go on the training? Did you pay for it yourself? Because that actually makes a difference because people, when they have to pay for training themselves, they suddenly start selecting things that will add value to their life. Whereas if someone else is paying for it, they just go because it means I don't have to make food today. I don't have to go to work today because I'm, I'm in training, you know. And... I try to see if we select participants for our training courses to really engage with them and say, this training course, if you're going to just file that book away afterwards, then why are you here? Because otherwise you don't engage. And that's so important for people to, even if training is for free, think before you go, because you can never have your time back that you've spent there. You know, we'll talk another day about how to spend your time wisely, but training courses can even go up to a week. And then you've sat there for a whole week being bored maybe and not finding the value in what you have um, been given. And I think that's actually a very silly thing to do because then you're not investing in yourself. You are actually wasting your time. And I would like to tell people, Think very carefully, go through the training course, ask questions and say, this is something that I can really apply. Because, you know, I can't, I can't teach you anything. I can show you things, you know, I can pass on information. But how you use that information that I pass on is all up to you because everybody interprets things differently, you know. If you don't get at least one thing out of an entire workshop, then you've completely wasted your time. You know, I agree. Uh, and, yeah, and so it's a very important thing. People think, oh, training. No, it should be, ah, oh, training. Yes, I'm going to learn something new. If that's not how you're thinking about it, don't go. Do something I else. I agree you know, because I love learning. I mean, I feel, I find knowledge empowers you a great deal. Yeah. Uh, I think it makes your life easier. Uh, because, you know, the more you equip with, with, with information and, and information that's relevant to you. And I think sometimes yeah. when people do training or, or, or some other stuff, they don't actually know. Perhaps sometimes they may not know themselves what they want out of life. So they just attend these things. And like mm -hmm. you're saying, companies, companies offer training. So it's just about scoring points, really, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to, to doing something that's good enough for you yeah. or that's going to benefit yeah. you, you in the future. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking right now at this Crowd1 business, and the reason I'm looking at it is, is because it is an online business, and mm -hmm. um, it really is about affiliate marketing and referral mm -hmm. commission. And there's a great opportunity for me to use it alongside my, my existing business mm -hmm. so that whoever comes into my team or whoever, um, or even as my clients, you know, I can say to them, okay, mm -hmm. look, 
here's a way to earn an additional cash flow for your business because yes you might be back in business or yes you might be back in your job but you don't know the snowball effect that's going to come within the next few months because yeah. you know I'm reading, reading the post today where there was a whole <laughs> list of companies that's gone bankrupt victoria's secret chanel is not no longer yeah. existing there was a whole list of well-known brands that are shutting their doors reducing their staff and this is overseas mm -hmm. We haven't, don't even know. I mean, the government is really, I mean, I was reading articles of how much they've wasted billions of our money again. So where does this leave us as a country? Where does this leave us as in terms of business? So we've got to find ways to fall back on things over and above and then use this opportunity. So I'm saying to my people, use this opportunity that we can learn. Let's learn how to network. Let's run a networking group. Let's start um, helping each other. Uh, build teams, learn about teams, yeah, and then I'm going to show you how to do wallets and, and all sorts yeah. of things. So this is yeah. what I'm loving about it. So I'm not going to, it's not just that you, yes, it's a business in a box, but you're also going to learn with that business yeah. in a box yeah. because I'm going to show you different stages of how to market yourself, how to build your brand, because people forget that even though you do work <laughs> for a company you still need to develop your brand if people can't find you online especially mm -hmm. now if you're going for a job interview the people that are going to get those jobs are the ones that's got a profile on linkedin those ones that were a profile mm -hmm. on the internet because people want to go the, those people recruiters and i mean i do it i go online mm -hmm. and i go and look mm -hmm. at the people i go and get a feel yeah. for the person and yeah. and, and so I really do feel that those who are going to get the jobs are those that, that are going to be online. And, you know, I love this. We watched an event on Saturday. And again, you know, we're talking about culture. We're talking about uh, brand and, and how the people have embraced this, 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 this company. Because everyone, because it's changed so many people's lives. I mean, people mm -hmm. have really been struggling and they've come out conquering and people are so grateful and they're embracing this. And I'm seeing people, how they're using it alongside their business and how they're starting to support each other and there again the brand culture comes out within that yeah. company so so yeah no i'm really really looking forward to it and and they're also giving everybody a free package to give away so it looks like some of us will have some business packages to give away because they want That's to nice. pay it forward isn't it just beautiful so you just going to get an entry package where you can go and support another biz a person to start their little business or to to help them increase their mm. their, their income stream. So I I'm just I'm gonna go with it um, because I love yes. it. I love I'm um, everything online. I'm about making money online, so yeah. I'm going with that flow. <laughs> Good morning, Corinda. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. I can't. Um... I, I'm leaving you in charge of all that, Romani, because I can't see the chats, but I'm sure that you... you oh, right. No, no, it's fine. I, it's better you are in charge of all these things. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, any business, you, you're touching on something that people think it's easy and um, sometimes people just seem to, to find a quick way. It's like, oh, but you know what? You just have to do this, that, and the other. One hour a week and then you'll make all this money and... No, there's no business in the world that happens like that. It doesn't matter what type yeah. of business it is. The bottom line is if you're not making sales, everybody's got to sell something. Money doesn't fall out the sky. There's always a product, yeah. a service or something attached to it because otherwise how will you make money? So if you can't sell, um, then you need to go and up your skills. Now, there's a training course you can go on so that you find your sales personality. We all have a sales personality. Some people are introverts, so they have a different sales personality. They would rather walk over a bed of hot coals than pick up the phone and phone a stranger or walk down the street and knock on doors. Yeah. Because I love it. I can, um, I'm one of those crazies that if I go into an elevator and it's full of people, I'll turn around and start talking to them. So the next floor, most of them will jump out in terror. This, the following floor, I'll lose a few more, but in the end, I'll be stuck with the ones who really want to talk to me, you know, because I really have no scope. I can just talk to anyone. But that's my sales personality. You know, I don't mind. I've got a really thick skin. But the important thing is, is for you to not say, oh, I can't do sales. I don't know how to do sales. If those are your thoughts, you can't run a business. Because who's going to do the sales? Who's going to get the customers? And, 
you know? You know, just to interrupt, you know, Lizelle, I tell you what, I called you this for a moment. <laughs> but you know, Lizelle, I, that was me. And that's why I did have to take a step back because mm -hmm. I really had a fear of selling. And I realized that if I couldn't sell, how am I going to carry on a business? Yeah. So, you know, I had to really overcome that fear within me mm -hmm. to, to, to be able to approach people uh, mm -hmm. because it really was, was, was an obstacle and a challenge yeah. for me. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I attended the sales. I mean, I was, I was trained by one of the greatest people I could have been trained uh, for in sales. And it really helps me with understanding mm -hmm. marketing. And, mm -hmm. and putting the marketing elements together mm -hmm. because marketing and sales are really they are a marriage that you that Absolutely. they you know are very closely tied. Mm -hmm. um, so I understood that the 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 the, the uh, what do you call it the mechanics of it, but mm -hmm. the implementation or, or when I have to now go and do it, you know, I understand when I have to go and <laughs> pick up that phone. Ah, I'm walking everywhere, I'm making coffee, I'm procrastinating. <laughs> Near that phone. <laughs> it's like when you know you must fill in your tax return. There's yes. so many other things I can think of doing. <laughs> so I'm working in the garden, <laughs> fixing my bicycle. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. it's the same thing. So like, let us know what your sales experiences are. Um, Eve, let us know what, what, what you've experienced <laughs> and um, how you feel about sales. And um, yeah, we're talking about. I think I must come if you're doing that sales training. I'm happy to come there. I'll be equipping <laughs> myself. <laughs> I've had a few people um, say that, but you know what? The most important thing in sales, and I think I think you you know this, Robin, is that first of all you need to know who you are. You know the good old. Um, there's many of those models out there. Pick one that you like. We call it the true colors. So it's a very simple one to color code personalities. Now, obviously, you don't go around labeling people, but all of us fall into a certain category, and there's many of those uh, things out there. Go and try and figure out who you are and just embrace it. You know, say like, you know what, I will never be that person that knocks on doors or do cold calling. So just deal with it. It's fine that you're not. It's okay. But who are you? Which which type of person are you? What, how will you approach someone for sales? What would make you comfortable? Then work with that and you'll very quickly find your recipe to your, to your customers because you're now allowing yourself to be yourself because you are ultimately the best salesperson in your company because you know your business, you have the vision, you're passionate. So even if you just talk to one person, like I've only got Romani in front of me because I do not want to speak to 50 people, then Romani will very quickly see my eyes light up when I start talking about my business and she'll become my customer. You know what I mean? But people think that big marketing means or sales mean that I have to go knock on doors and make cold calls. No, find your personality. And then you will know where to find your customers as well, you know, and, and because you'll be I'm the keyboard warrior and, and, and I can speak to a crowd. Don't put me one on one, but I can speak to a crowd. So that's my <laughs> two elements. But I also think it's about finding and understanding who you're speaking to. So someone yeah. was asking me for advice this morning. Uh, and, and, and I was saying to them, you know, maybe it's just about going through all your lists to so go and visit your Facebook friends, go and see who they yeah. are, yeah. Uh, go in, and then go and reconnect because it's really about yeah. relationships. It's word yeah. of mouth, relationships, Absolutely. who knows that person, and, and also learning to understand where that person is. You've got to, got to become like a detective, you know, yes. what are you up to, where are you at? Yeah. Because someone is so if i use crowd one as an example if, if someone is uh busy at their job and they're making a fortune of money maybe they would not want to be starting a business at this moment no. so it yeah. won't be saying to them well do you want to start a business um no sorry i'm really <laughs> <laughs> um, a little so busy. Find, yeah, yeah so find out where they are what they're up yeah. to uh, and, 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 you know, establish the need of the person, you yeah, know, because yeah, everybody very, uses the product for a different reason. Same mm. as the internet company. They should have supplied me with mm. a service that was the tailored to me because mm. I said to them, I told them what my need was in clear, black, I, I'm streaming, I need to have a good upstream, I'm streaming on Facebook. So provide yeah. me with a solution that's going to be viable to my need and then be 
open and honest enough and say sorry, that's not going to work for you because mm. I respect you more by you telling me, no, well, sorry, that's not the solution. No, we can't help you there. Just be open yeah. and honest because, yeah. you know, what? then I'm going to talk about your service. But if you give yeah. me crap, I'm still going to talk about your service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that's a, a little tip that someone gave me many years ago and said, you must get your customers to um, have a conversation with you and say to them, if you didn't like what you experienced, then please tell me. But if you liked what you experienced, please tell everybody, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and how you deal with the problems of customers. Because you, you, you know what, not everybody will like what you do. Or sometimes we're human, we make a little mistake here or there. But it's how you deal with the difficult customers that actually really shows your mettle, you know, that shows mm -hmm. what you are made of and, and winning that customer either back or just settling an affair. Because if you're dealing with customers, you are not allowed to have any negative words in your vocabulary. It doesn't matter how nasty they are to you. you and that's, that's something that you need to train because, you know, we all get very emotional if someone att attacks our business. And say to you, oh, but you know, I went into your shop and I got the worst service ever. Now you actually want to clap the oak. It's like, what do you mean? I've got the best shop. Nobody's. But you got to listen to what that person just said and then handle it and say, what, what was your experience? It, unpack it for me. Let me see how I can make it better. So the words coming out of your mouth to defend. Um, a negative comment or an insult or, um, you know, a rant must never be there. You must always approach that with very positive words, you know, because quite often customers will also approach you with a problem that they brought from home or from yeah. their, uh, their boss or whatever, and they're kind of taking it out on you. So if you unpack the problem, you'll realize that it's so easy to diffuse the situation and that you could very, most of the time, your worst customer will become your best customer. It's all about how you deal with them. So this is important things for our small businesses because we all in a, in a um, stormy seas on our little boats at the moment and we really got to look after each other and, and we got to look after the few customers we do have, you know. So it's an important topic really, yeah. Yeah, it is. I see we're running out of time here. Any final thoughts or something you want to share with us? Um, I'm just checking because yesterday I had problems where uh, people were saying they weren't receiving our com they were we weren't receiving their comments. So they were commenting and it was disappearing into the ether. So I hope you've not been experiencing that. If you have, please let us know. Send us a message so that we can just uh, deal with that because I'm trying out a new streaming uh, system. And um, yeah, let's see how that works out. So thank you for that. Because Corinda, you're very quiet. Yesterday you were asking me 20 questions. <laughs> you probably <laughs> answered all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, because I was on um, a colleague of mine, Stephen Healy, an old, old uh -huh. connection of ours. And, and Corinda was on that show. And thank you for joining us again today, Corinda. Much appreciated. Thank you. And I hope to connect with you afterwards. Um, so, yes, because I believe he wants me to come and chat with him on his live show. So I need to awesome. go and investigate that. Yeah, so very, very cool. nice. And, um, okay. You were saying you have something about Mandela Day. Mandela Day, yeah. Yes, okay. I am. Um, let me end off with that. So I am our head office is here in Main Road, Fishhook in the Western Cape. So anybody in the area of the Deep South, as we call it, um, we've happened upon our project here in Ocean View, a, a, a cooperative group of, of ladies running the most amazing organic vegetable farm. And um, they are at the high school in Ocean View for those of you um, who are in the area. And they, they are going to do a little coffee shop and a nursery. And, but the, the veggies are just amazing. We bought some. Prices are really good. So we're going to make that our angels project with Rotary this year. And um, all the angels and the Rotarians that are available are going to spend Mandela Day at the Ocean View Organic Farms at the Ocean View High School. So anybody who's interested in joining us for Mandela Day, they need a little bit of painting here and weeding there. So there's a whole 
program for the day is going to be lots of fun. Obviously, uh, uh, controlled because of the COVID regulations, but they've got it all under control. So anybody in the area wanting to join us on Mandela Day to uh, make the veggies happen, uh, let me know. Uh, maybe on our Facebook page, Romani, this is where you should step in and help me now. <laughs> so <laughs> I, will, I will do. And Thanks. yes, because I was showing you guys doing the nice veggies this weekend. I wasn't sure if that was on your property or somewhere else, but everyone was... No, that little... was uh, your yeah, Sun Valley Can group. It was at someone oh. else's property and oh. it was really fun. We had the police come past and we were all a little bit nervous, but then they joined us. <laughs> so <it was> <laughs> You always get nervous when the police come along. It's like, I know what's going on. Anyway, I'll have the conversation. <laughs> so, yes, we're going to close over that. Please let us know what you'd like to chat about. And, uh, yeah, if you've had any poor customer service, let us know. We'd love to hear your story. Mm -hmm. And um, if you've got any questions or challenges with sales and anything else in business, or if you need some training, um, Lizelle is also over there. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be giving away a few packages for Crowd1 to start your business. So let us know why you deserve to be on Crowd1 and what, what uh, you are going to do or be part of my team, I should say. Because you know what? I just, if you give, I find that whenever you just give something for free, and this is what someone in our team has experienced, because two people on our team have been giving away packages and uh, to help people get started. But they've done nothing to earn those packages and I'm saying you know you've got to say to them you know go and find me your four people and then you're going to you know so you've got to tell me why you should benefit because or why you deserve this package because otherwise I'm not just going to give it to you because I find if I just give something to people I don't know they just don't do anything with it and they sit on yeah. it and then no, 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 no. and then they start saying no oh, it's not working <laughs> But they're just not actually doing, making the effort to make it work. So if you'd like a free package to start a business or to earn a residual income, let us know why you deserve it and come and show us what you got because uh, we believe in sponsoring and helping businesses. Thank so, you, Robin. All right. Yes, thank you. And, um, and that's it for today. See you next that's week. That's it for today. See you next okay. week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye.